Hello, this video is going to describe SkySolve, my small device that you attach to a telescope that tells you where the telescope is pointed. Here it will tell us that the telescope is pointing at the handle of the Big Dipper. It uses a Raspberry Pi and a high quality Pi camera with a 25 millimeter lens for a 15 degree field of view of the sky. The Pi is mounted in a 3D printed case and it has a tripod socket on the bottom so that you can mount it on your telescope. It also has a switch to switch the Wi-Fi from your local house Wi-Fi to one based on the Raspberry Pi hotspot itself so that you can use it out in the field where you don't have a local Wi-Fi. Then it can talk to another computer which is running Sky Safari which will show you where your telescope is pointed. Which of course is the whole purpose of this thing. So you mount it on your telescope and align it so that it is looking at the same part of the sky your telescope is looking at. Then it takes pictures about once every second or so and uses plate solving to figure out what it is looking at on the sky and feeds that information to Sky Safari. It also has a web-based interface that you can use to control it from a, another computer on the same network. The web interface is not needed for normal operation of SkySolve. It is used to help you configure SkySolve to your requirements. This video will spend most of its time discussing that web-based interface. You access it from any browser on the same network as SkySolve by using the SkySolve IP address followed by a colon 5000. If you get the SD card from me with the SkySolve loaded on it, then it won't know your local Wi-Fi address and it will create a hotspot that you have to go find. Here I'll show you how to do that. Open your Wi-Fi configuration and find the RPi hotspot and connect to that network. Then browse to 192.168.50.1.1 colon 5000. That will bring up the web interface of SkySolve. There are a row of buttons here across the top that you can use to control it and change how it operates. Below that is a status field that updates every half second unless it's turned off. Below that is the current image from the camera. And below that is a log area that shows information about how the system is going and running. The first three buttons control how it's operating, whether it's paused, in align mode, or solving. When it's paused, the camera isn't doing anything and the software is just waiting for you to tell it to do something. In align mode, it's taking pictures but not solving them. So you can use it to focus the camera and align it to the telescope view. In solve mode, it will be taking pictures and solving them, then sending position information to Sky Safari when asked for it. There is a demo mode that you can use to see how it works indoors without having to take it out under the stars. There are four images that I took in my backyard that you can play around and try to solve. They are this one of Aquarius, which of course doesn't look so much like Aquarius at the moment, but I live in a rather light polluted area. The next image here is Orion's shield. Here's part of that. We'll see more of these in a minute. Here is the handle of the Big Dipper. And here is Corona Borealis. When in demo mode, it's like being outside, except that the solver doesn't solve the images automatically. It only solves them when you click on 
solve this one. Okay, well then let's solve this one. Here it says it's solving. It found 74 sources, which are stars, and here are the stars that it found. And if you have configured the solver to go into verbose mode, which I have here, then you can click on this image and it will show you the constellation lines if it has them for that area. Next, we can look at the position information it gave to Sky Safari. Next, let's try the Aquarius image. And here is the position in Sky Safari. These first two images were taken with the 25 millimeter focal length lens. The second one were taken with the 16 millimeter Raspberry Pi lens. And uh, it gives us a 22 degree field of view, whereas the first one gave us a 15 degree field of view. So we're going to need to change the solve parameters to solve the images taken with the 16 millimeter focal length lens with the 22 degree field of view. So here I select the uh, pre-configured profile for a 16 millimeter lens. It will narrow Astrometry's search in its database for the correct files, thus shortening the solve time. and it successfully solved the image, which was part of the Big Dipper. Okay, well, I suppose we should do the very last one. Let's do Corona Borealis. Well, that's all the uh, demo images, four images, two taken with the 25 millimeter focal length lens and two taken with the 16 millimeter lens. They're there for you to try to learn the program and to play around with solving parameters and uh, just have fun. Here are the setup parameters for the telescope setup in Sky Safari. You want to set the scope type to Stellar Cat Servo Cat, the mount type to Alt As Push To, connection via Wi Fi, and then the IP of your SkySolve, which isn't the IP address shown here. It might be 192.168.50.5. Then the port number is 5005. That should have uh, Sky Safari's telescope all set up for you. Let's take a closer look at the solve parameters. There's a few more that are important. To begin with, the plate solver parameters screen pops up like this, telling you which solver it has. Uh, selected either Astrometry or uh, Tetra 3. Tetra 3 is more or less an experimental one and I uh, recommend Astrometry. The, the next important thing on this screen is to set whether the device starts solving as soon as it powers up or waits for you to tell it to start solving. Once it is all configured, it's good, of course, to have it start solving at startup, and this is where you set it. After you click this, then you need to set apply, and then you can close. All right, well, now let's dive into the Astrometry solve parameters themselves. Do that by clicking on Astrometry. And here are all the parameters. As we've seen before, you, I have profiles set up. 
with various configurations of the parameters. I actually have them set up for each of the uh, demo images and then for a 25 focal length lens and a 16 focal length lens. And if you had clicked on Tetra 3 as your solver, then this would have been highlighted. But there won't be any parameters that you change for it other than just turning it on. If you give astrometry a hint about what the field size is, it can solve images much faster. So, therefore, we tell it what the field size is for each of the lenses that you can have on, on it. So our two field sizes are, for the 16 millimeter lens, we have about a 22 to 23 degree field of view, usually. And for the 25, we have about a 15 millimeter 15 degree field of view for the size. And so we can set the limits of the field of view to a narrow section. Astrometry can solve 15 to 22 degree fields of views without having to search through a lot of database files. And uh, so I have only loaded the database files needed for those uh, 15 to 22 degree field of views. You can, of course, load more astrometry database files, and uh, I leave that as an exercise for the student. You can figure that out by looking up on the net. If you do that, then you can use the software determined uh, field of view, and it can uh, solve uh, tighter uh, field of views or even wider field of views then but it will take a it can take a lot longer to solve if that's the case then you change the max solve time to be a lot larger number with the field of view that we have 10 seconds is reasonable for this solve value These parameters down here you usually don't need to mess with except for two. One, this search radius in degrees from last solved location. If it's blank, astrometry won't use it, but if it has some number in there, that's the number of degrees that it searches from the last known location. This can shorten the time that it takes to search, and so this is a good uh, value to have down here of about 10 degrees because usually you don't move a telescope around far from its last location when you're just scanning the sky. This will help astrometry solve quickly. But it has a disadvantage in that if it doesn't find any find anything within that degrees it doesn't it says it failed to solve. I have it set up so that if that happens it will then try a second search without any search radius, and then it will solve. So when you move the telescope further than 10 degrees, it tends to come up and fail with uh, the first solve, and then the second solve will pass, and you will, you will see that happen in the solve status going by. So the bottom line is it's going to take a little bit longer to solve when you move the telescope However, just moving the telescope probably blurs the image and makes it take longer to wait for the telescope to settle down before it can actually solve. The next important parameter here is the verbose setting. Verbose allows it then to say what stars it found and to draw on the uh, web interface its uh, the constellations if it finds any. The downside to the verbose setting is that it takes a couple of seconds longer to solve because it has to plot out the stars and the constellation lines. Also, you can only see them when you're using the web interface. And if you're not using the web interface, then why have them turned on, making it take longer to solve? One last thing, to if you change any of these parameters, you need to click on Apply for them to take effect. And then after you do that, then you can click on the Close button or anywhere along here or even on the back screen. 
The results config is used to access a few more parameters and the observing log. The first button clears the log that's below the camera view. And this next button is obsolete and I'm not going to discuss it. <laughs> this shows star button is um, one of my debugging things and I'm not going to discuss it either. Then we have the observing log button. The last important configuration is for the observing logs. After I have an observing session outside, sometimes when I come back in the house, I would like to review what it was I saw. SkySolve can be configured to save each solved image and each solved position. The each solved position goes into what I call the observing log and the each solved image goes into the history directory. It will save each solved image provided its position is different than the last solved image by this specified distance. I've found that about a half a degree is a reasonable difference. Below the image history, you can enable the observing log. The observing log is a text file where each line has a time, right ascension, declination, and if you had verbose mode on, the constellations it found in that image. You can download that file onto your browser computer, or you can step through it in the browser itself, in the control panel here. As you step through each line of that file, it updates the position on Sky Safari as well. The observing log is the fastest way to scan through a night's observations and then review them on Sky Safari as you step through it. And of course you have a clear button to clear them out. Well that wraps up everything I wanted to say about SkySolve. I hope it has been informative and I'll see you next time.